Welcome to TPM Vids, where we talk all about theme parks and more. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Universal Studios Hollywood is the original Universal theme park. Located in Universal City, California, the park is smaller than its Florida counterpart, but that's because, first and foremost, Universal Studios Hollywood is a real working movie studio. The park as we know it today didn't really take shape until Universal Studios Florida was built, and they just keep expanding the theme park. Separated into the upper lot and the lower lot, Universal Studios Hollywood is home to a variety of rides. From intense thrills to slow-moving dark rides, plus many shows. There is something for everyone, but which rides are the best? Well, let's find out as we count down the top 7 best rides at Universal Studios Hollywood. Number 7 Now right off the bat, we need to talk about the studio tour. It's the heart and soul of Universal Studios Hollywood. For the longest time, the studio tour was practically the only thing to do at the park. Now, the tour as we know it today began in 1964, and since then, it's continued to change and evolve, introducing new attraction experiences. It will take a good hour of your time, but it wouldn't be a trip to Universal Studios without it. Not only do you get a glimpse of some of the projects filming on the lot and maybe spot a celebrity or two, but you also get to experience other smaller attractions along the way. It's really a movie studio tour with some rides. It's classic movie making at its finest. Some longtime highlights of the tour are Psycho with Norman Bates, The Flash Flood, and of course, Jaws. The close encounter with the animatronic shark never gets old. It's a classic. Do not worry, you're not the first, you're going to be the last. You're just part of the family now. Good job. Welcome, uh, first to the family as well. Good job, Bruce. Back to one. Only shark in the world that can do the backstroke. Look at him go. One of my favorite sequences on the tour is Earthquake. The set dressed as a San Francisco subway station is the scene of an 8.3 earthquake that floods the station. This debuted in 1989, and even though it's over 30 years old now, nothing beats practical effects like this. It's a shame it was removed from Universal Orlando, but at least California sticks with the classics. More recent attraction additions to the tour are King Kong and Fast and the Furious Supercharged. Oh, well, hello, beautiful people. All right, I see you. Guess it's five o'clock somewhere, and that somewhere is here. Both use 3D glasses and are screen-based experiences, but neither of them are my favorite. It's a good thing they're just small parts of the whole tour. But Fast and the Furious Supercharged should have never replaced Disaster at Universal Orlando. It's kind of underwhelming as a standalone attraction. Now aside from this being the weak point of the studio tour, the experience is the most bang for your buck. I mean, it's worth the price of admission alone, and it's definitely something you need to experience at Universal Studios Hollywood. Number 6 Next, over in the upper lot, you can find DreamWorks Theater Kung Fu Panda Adventure. It opened in 2018, and the attraction is unique to Universal Studios Hollywood. Now, the pre-show is like the ultimate DreamWorks crossover, with characters from many DreamWorks classics. And the great thing here is that all the original character voices were used. The pre-show is a great example of how to incorporate physical sets with the good old Universal screens. It's quite enjoyable. 
Then once you're in the theater, be prepared for the seats to move. The attraction has a motion simulator feel, but it's nothing as intense as traditional motion simulator attractions. I mean, this is such a great way to enhance a film attraction, especially one that doesn't use 3D glasses, which I'm always a fan of. Not to mention, there is also wind and water effects. The film does last 5 minutes, so if motion isn't your thing, there are non-motion seats available as well. Now for about half of the film, it's just the screen in front of you, but right before your eyes, the entire theater becomes the canvas for the action. It's such a fun little surprise and such a clever use of projection mapping. It heightens the whole attraction, making this one of the must-dos at the park. Bye guys! Number 5 Over in the lower lot, you can find Transformers The Ride 3D. It opened in 2012, and this motion simulator dark ride is definitely on the thrilling side. As you make your way through the queue, you enter the Nest Headquarters. You soon learn there's been an attack on the headquarters to recover the remaining AllSpark piece. You need to evacuate and transport the piece out of Nest. Luckily, the Autobot ride vehicle is waiting for you. Then the thrilling escape begins. Oh, and don't forget to grab those 3D glasses before boarding. That's trouble, alright. Watch out! It's Ravage! He's after the Allspark! Now the scope and scale of each of the show scenes is massive, and the ride takes place on two different levels in the show building. It may be a screen-heavy attraction, but by combining some physical set pieces plus special effects like wind, smoke, and hot air, it's a fully immersive sensory experience. Escape Video doesn't really do this ride justice, so you need to experience this in person. The action-packed high-speed chase lasts about four and a half minutes, and it never disappoints. Your bravery saved the planet. Well done, Freedom Fighters. Way to improvise, team. Thanks for being the challenge. Number four. The headliner attraction in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. The ride opened with the land in 2016, and it's an exhilarating dark ride with many surprises along the way. As you approach the Hogwarts castle, you immediately know you're in for a special experience. Once you're inside, the queue is rich with detail featuring many familiar characters from the films, fully immersing you into the world of Harry Potter. Now it's easy to be fooled by the ride vehicles in the load area. It may look tame, but once you get going, this dark ride definitely features a little dose of thrill. By simulating the sensation of flying, this unique ride system has your vehicles suspended on a robotic arm. You'll twist and swoop through physical sets, past animatronics, and into projected dome scenes. There may be even a couple jump scares along the way. It's a really fun ride as you fly with Harry Potter through scenes from the books and movies. I also love that this ride doesn't rely on 3D glasses. It just creates a better ride experience. Can you tell I'm not a big fan of 3D glasses? Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is full of magic, and even if you aren't a Harry Potter fan, the effects are impressive and the detail is incredible. It's definitely one ride that leaves you asking yourself, how do they do that? Number 3 Staying in the upper lot of the park? Secret Life of Pets Off the Leash is the newest ride at Universal Hollywood. It opened in April of 2021, and it's currently the only slow-moving dark ride at the park. You start off by entering the New York apartment, where you'll find a lot of little fun bits to explore inside. 
Here you're met with many of your favorite characters from the film, like Max and Duke. Oh, wow. There's just, there's just so many of them. Hey, little guys. So you, how do I put this delicately, your strength. And even Snowball. All right, all right. Keep it down. No barking. Okay, with well, a little barking. Go ahead. Talk, let it out. All right, stop now. Then once you load into your cardboard box, you're turned into a puppy as you embark on a journey through the streets of New York, preparing yourself to be adopted. I feel like I'm two and a half again. Remember to listen to Snowball. Which is something I never thought I'd say. Don't we, Josh? Some of us get boxes. Some of us get super cool. The sets are vibrant and the story is a lot of fun. It's so refreshing to see Universal create a dark ride that doesn't rely on screens and uses more animatronics and physical sets. The screens are just one other element that help tell the story, instead of them acting as a crutch to tell the entire story. Now, the animatronics may not be the most advanced figures, but they still do a great job at bringing these adorable animals to life. I've seen a lot of dislike towards this ride and that it's not up to Disney standards, but I find it still has a certain charm that's unlike any of the other rides at the park. It adds variety to your day at Universal Hollywood. And for that reason alone, Secret Life of Pets Off the Leash deserves to be on the list. Number 2. Heading back down to the lower lot, here is where you can find Revenge of the Mummy. The ride opened in May of 2004 and it's an enclosed steel roller coaster and dark ride hybrid that has thrill written all over it. When you enter the queue, you'll find yourself in an abandoned archaeological dig site, which turns out to be Imhotep's burial chamber. As you board your minecart, the ride starts off as a pretty tame dark ride exploring the tomb, then the treasure room. But suddenly, it takes a turn. Now your souls belong to me! Before you know it, you're launched forwards, reaching top speeds of 40 miles or 64 kilometers per hour. Then you come to a halt and are sent backwards until the end. It's a different track layout than The Mummy in Florida, but it's still a thrilling ride through the dark, with tons of unexpected twists and turns. Be prepared to store your bags in a free locker before you enter the queue. Revenge of the Mummy is scary, dark, and really delivers on that thrill factor. It's a lot of fun. It was originally marketed as California's fastest and scariest indoor roller coaster, and today, that title still holds true. Number 1. Staying in the lower lot, Jurassic World The Ride brings you face to face with prehistoric dinosaurs. Prior to becoming Jurassic World in 2019, this used to be Jurassic Park The Ride, and it originally opened in June of 1996. It was the very first Jurassic Park ride, and even though today the ride has received a facelift and a new story, it's still a universal classic. After boarding your raft, you're taken up the lift hill and into the Mosasaurus Aquarium Observatory, which is one of the new reimagined parts of the ride. I think it's a really clever use of screens when you combine it with the water effects. I like that a lot of the original ride with these animatronic dinosaurs were kept intact, but things do take a turn once the raft enters Predator's Cove. Another new area created for Jurassic World is up the lift hill in Tyrannosaurus Rex Kingdom. This massive Indominus Rex animatronic is huge! It 
It's a highlight of the ride, next to the iconic 85-foot drop that reaches a top speed of 50 miles or 80 kilometers per hour. Now you probably will be a bit wet, but unless you're sitting in the front row, you probably won't get soaked. Jurassic Park was already a great ride, but with the Jurassic World updates, I'd say it's the best ride at the park. Now have you ever visited Universal Studios Hollywood? What's your favorite ride? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.